basically I did the math out. The answer was the sin um, theta 2 equals um, the rest of the problem. I can't separate sin from theta 2. Okay. And it, the book he doesn't go over it. I looked in the back of practice problems too, see if there's something in the solution. No. He just gave you the answer and there's nothing. We'll, we'll do practice problems in a minute. Let's, okay. let's talk about the eyeball first. This is the last topic and then we have to talk about oh, this chapter. Okay. Sorry. That's okay. We'll talk about the eyeball first. It's much better than the factor on the board. And then, uh, and then we'll move on to okay. issues like that. And that's a great one to do with Russell. Yeah. <clears throat> uh, let's see. So here's your eyeball. See, I told you it'd be a better drawing. <coughs> it's a little disturbing. It is an actual ball. <laughs> yes, it is a little disturbing, isn't it? Is it like jelly? Uh, actually, this is a cavity. Uh, so the middle of it is just empty. Like empty, do you mean like? There's nothing in it. So it's a vacuum or just air in there? It's an air ball. Mm. That's disturbing. Do that, okay? <laughs> Light comes in. It, uh, this thing here is called the cornea. This hole right here is called the pupil. This big green thing here is not actually green. It's called the lens. What focuses the light? Two things, the cornea and the lens focuses the light. Now, <clears throat> is your eyeball alive? Yeah. Sure, right? I mean, right. if you like scratch it, does it heal? Yeah. It's, it's, it's alive. Don't don't try that either. Okay, that's like your your eyeball is alive. Now there's certain criteria necessary for living tissue to be alive. Like if you scratch your hand, it'll heal. Right? Scratch your eye, and it'll heal. It's amazing. Okay. <clears throat> what is necessary for tissue tissue to be alive? It bleeds. Why do you say? Why do you think it must have blood? Because it blood's life, it carries oxygen to cells, etc., etc., etc. Cells, so living tissue is composed of cells. Cells require oxygen. The way cells acquire oxygen is through. You know you want to say it, just go ahead. Carbon. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> they get oxygen through blood, right? This is how, this is how, this is why when you scratch your hand, it bleeds, okay? Because there's blood in every cell. It's got to be. Otherwise, the cell would die. That's how it gets oxygen. What color is blood? Red. Why is it that when you look at this white wall, you don't see it pink? As through blood. Because this is this cornea and this lens, living tissue. Don't they necessarily have blood? Did you ever think about that? <laughs> the thing. Our eyes are the most transparent material known to mankind. Period. This is amazing. And yet, it's living tissue. And yet, there's no blood. Nor is there capillaries that would be necessary to transport the blood. 
why don't you have blood and capillaries in your eyeball, in your lens and cornea? Because that doesn't make the world look very spidery. <laughs> you can't see through that stuff. And you've got to be able to see through your eyeball. There's a whole separate mechanism that your body has built into it so that it can still be alive. This is amazing. And the, the, the handiwork behind that is astounding. Kind of disturbing, too. Yeah. It's, it's amazing. Next point that camera that we've got up there, or any other camera you've used. If you want to focus on something, how do you do it? Either it's digital enhancement. Yeah, okay, that's after you take the picture. What about well, the so Sometimes I know some cameras, like my phone camera, does actually zoom in, it just increases. Uh, it, just, it, just, just, it just looks at a smaller piece of it. Mm -hmm. With a camera, digital manipulation aside, that's a whole other issue. With the camera, you move the lenses. So you've got a lens here and a lens here. If you want to look at something that's farther away, you, you adjust the, the distance between those two lenses. Okay? And it takes a while to focus. With your eyeball, if you want to focus, guess what it does? Does it, have, does it move lenses? No. All these muscles along here just change the shape of that lens. Jones, could you change the shape of this lens for me? You can't, you can't really just do that with cameras. We, we don't have the technology to have truly clear lenses that are adjustable shapes, let alone a controlled adjustment. Does that, does that make sense? This is our eye is totally it's in its own capacity. It's way more advanced than anything we've got. Again, we know how it works, and we can't emulate it. Why can't People are trying, and they haven't gotten there yet. Now, we may get to the point where we can emulate it closely. I'm doubting that we can emulate it completely. So Cloning isn't copying it. Cloning is just using the mechanism that God's already made yeah. to... Yeah make another one as he would have anyway. Yeah. So, just a curiosity, I know with like cameras, with that pixel density, mm -hmm. that's, like, that's huge. Okay, so wait, pause right there. Pixel density. The fact that cameras must have pixels is, again, totally contrary to what our eye does. Mm -hmm. Our eye sees all of the image, not just the individual pixels. So, is that... All of it. And, if we were talking about a movie film, we would be seeing a picture, a picture, a picture, a picture, a picture, a picture, that were all close enough together that it looked like a moving object. But if we're talking about our eyeball, we're seeing not only all the image, but all the image all the time. We see you know, all of it. Okay, go on, pixel density. So, what would be the equivalent pixel density of our eye? If we could, like, if somehow... There isn't an equivalent. Okay. Our eye is way beyond that. It's a whole other ballgame. <laughs> okay, I just hug this. Eyeball game. Uh, yes. <laughs> <laughs> how, how dense do the pixels have to be so that our eyes can't distinguish between the individual pixels? Because, I mean, even on the best phones, like, people look really carefully you can see a little bit of them. Um, you can see on the screen. You just walk up here, you can see the pixels on the screen. Yeah. Um, I don't know the answer. But there is, there is a limit. It's the resolution of our eye. And there's a lot of factors that go into resolution. Resolution is probably the worst. So, yeah. So, y'all's resolution is better than my resolution. And when you get to my age, your resolution will be worse as well. <laughs> but there's all sorts of factors that go into resolution. Um, assuming we still have our eyes. Yes, assuming we haven't just decided to see if they'll float or not. Um, <laughs> That's so disturbing. <laughs> <laughs> when you get the image on the back of your uh, retina back here, the image is upside down. Why is it upside down? Because of reflection. Because it's a real image. 
if it wasn't a real image, you couldn't see it. It's got to be a real image. So this is a convex lens. It makes a real image on the back of your cornea. Okay? And it's a real image, so necessarily it must be upside down. And yet, when I see you, I see you right side up. How's that work? Your brain flips it. Nope. Okay. The optic nerve flips it before it ever gets to your brain. <laughs> How cool is that? Your brain doesn't flip it, your optic nerve flips it for you. So, I know that you can really damage your cornea with high light exposure and stuff like that. Yeah, there's lots of damage. There's lots of ways to damage you. Can't, why can't you? I don't suggest you do any. <laughs> why can't you heal from, from stuff damaged to your eye? There is some things that you can heal from, and there are some things that you can't. What's the difference in why? I don't know. You have to talk to an ophthalmologist. I recommend it if you buy it. But don't try to damage your eye. It's not okay. good. Hey, Dr. Red, all I say, hi, Dr. <laughs> doctors, ophthalmologists, there's, I, I had to learn this, my father in law is one, there's an ophthalmologist and an ophthalmologist, don't get them mixed up, an ophthalmologist, okay, he just, he, that guy helps you figure out what size glasses you need and what type of lens you need and that sort of thing, an ophthalmologist opens your eyeball up and does surgery in there. Which one is your ophthalmologist? He's the ophthalmologist, okay. okay, that's why I had to learn the difference, I wouldn't know. Probably just won't be associated with people giving you glasses. What's that? You probably just won't be uh, confused with That's right. With yeah. Glasses. yeah, there's a lot more uh, school that goes into getting the uh, surgeon on eyeballs. Um, all this is to say that our eye is amazingly complex, shockingly complex, and I've only shown you little tidbits of it. Our eyeball could detect one photon if it was a perfectly dark room and we saw one photon, we'd see it. Or our eyeball could detect 10 billion photons and distinguish color differences and shape differences with 10 billion photons. That, that, that's that range of uh, measurement capability that I told you about with the ear. Eye is the same way. We can't, we can't do it. We don't have anything in any measuring system that comes close. We just can't. And yet, our eyeballs just do it. So, how many photons are in the white house from lights? I don't know. 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 I don't have that number. Mm -hmm. I guess, I don't, you don't even have a good, I don't even have a good feel for that. I don't have, I haven't spent a lot of time here. thinking of it in terms of the number of photons. So, so there we go. Uh, oh, and you need to know about myopia and hyperopia. So let's see if we can that. Here's your eyeball. Oh, that's cool. Now, um, okay. You want your image to form back right, form right back here, but if they don't converge to a focus point. If it does not focus on your uh, retina, is that what is that, is yeah. that right? Retina. Yeah. If it does not focus on your retina, you will not see an image. Okay. So I believe this one should be the right one. Let's see. I think it might be that. No, nope, that's not it. It's this one. Doctor Cor, I think. No, nope, that's not it. I think the picture's on there in the angle. Is it crooked? Yeah. right on retina. Okay, this is what you want. If, however, your eyeball doesn't focus properly, the light focuses in front of your retina. What is this called? Myopia. Otherwise known as? I don't know. <laughs> Nearsightedness. This is when you can see things up close, but you can't see things a long ways away nearsighted. You can see things that are near. And this is a problem when you want to see things a long ways away. Parallel light doesn't focus on your retina. 
So what's the solution? Any ideas? You poke your eyes out. <laughs> no! <laughs> glasses? Yeah, you get glasses. And so the glasses... Get glasses till they focus on the retina. Okay, does this make sense? By the way, between 1974 and 1979, 21 percent of Americans suffered from myopia. This is the most common eye problem, myopia. Okay, is that what you have, sir? No, your hyperopia. Okay. I guess. My, how do you get <laughs> how do you get myopia? There are two ways. Television? <laughs> Think of something bad. Must be TV, <laughs> right? <laughs> uh, yes, actually. <laughs> uh, so th there's two options. Option number one, the primary way to get myopia is you just inherit it. You didn't do anything wrong. You just got it. Is we call that mutations. Darn genes. Yeah, you got a, you inherited a mutation from your parents, or your parents might not even have it, but the gene mutated on its way to you. It was recessive. No, it was a true mutation. Okay. Mutations always lose information, and your eye loses the ability to focus properly. Now, but most of the most of these are just inherited. In other words, your parents, one of your parents had it, may have been recessive, and now you got it. Or actually, they both had it, and it's just a recessive you got it. <clears throat> now, 41% of Americans have myopia. Now, you're right, the other way to get myopia is to stare at a TV screen too long. Or a computer screen. Or a computer screen, okay. You stare at it too long, what that happens, what that does is your eyeballs only focus at the same distance all day long. Same uniform brightness all day long. And your eyes forget how to adjust the iris, deal with different intensities, and they forget how to adjust the lens, deal with different focus distances. So you're, you get myopia. Okay. Now, <clears throat> we don't know for sure exactly why more Americans have myopia now it could be entirely due to more people staring at the TV and the computer screen all the time. Could it's it be also, it very well could be though, my guess is it's a combination of which how much is which and how much is the other, I don't know. <clears throat> that there's just more bad genes in our gene pool. Could this is the way it always goes. We all this tends towards disorder. Now in in Looking at the way this, we've got two engines going on here. There's mutations causing problems and uh, natural selection getting rid of problems. Here's the problem. With humans, we don't have a whole lot of natural selection. You can't see well? No, just put some glasses on, you're fine. Hmm. And, and, and you will have kids eventually. Okay. So it could also be that maybe we're using computers rather than the 70s are using TVs. Computers are closer to you, that's mm -hmm. the day. It could be, yeah. Yeah, the TVs are going by the wayside. Everybody's got their own personal TV now. Held it exactly 25 centimeters all the time. <coughs> um, yeah, in the, in the non-human world, bad genes get passed on, animals can't see where they're going as well. What happens to them? Close. They get eaten. Natural selection selects out those bad genes. So natural selection is a real thing. Natural selection is indeed a real thing. Mutations are indeed a real thing. It's just that the and, and natural selection really does prevent bad genes from moving on. It, it really does work that way. Uh, <clears throat> but the problem is natural selection doesn't keep up with mutation rate. And human gene pool especially is going downhill faster. It's going down faster than natural selection can take care of it. Hmm. Clean up the mess. 
That's really interesting. You did a lot of really messed up things. I mean, yeah. Look at the thirties and the. It's called the, the fancy word is called genetic entropy. It's our gene pool is going down downhill fast. You know, this this is reality. This is what's going on in our world right now. And it's more than just eyeballs. What does evolution say? We should be getting better. Oh, but that's not what we're seeing, is it? Oh. Yeah, there's problems with that. Anyway. The other problem is <coughs> hyperopia. Okay, you see the problem there? What's that problem? It focuses beyond the eyeball. Yeah, it focuses beyond the retina, and so you still don't see your image. This is when you can see things that are a long ways off, but you can't see things up close. Okay. <coughs> what do you think the solution is? Put glasses on again. <clears throat> the last one you needed a converging lens. Okay. Let me try that again. Last one you needed a diverging lens because it was focusing too much. You need to spread it out a little bit, so you put a diverging lens on there. This one isn't focusing enough, so you need more focusing power, so you put a converging lens on there. And so you put this one on there. Oh, look at that. That one's really nice. <clears throat> okay. Does that you okay with this? What a fun toy, I like this thing. Okay, uh, there we go. So um, this is all we need to talk about in terms of the rest of the chapter. Isn't that great? It hurts at first, but then your eyeballs adjust. It's pretty great. That's, that's your iris opening and closing. I'm sorry, your pupil. Uh, yeah, that's right. Your iris opening and closing that little hole there. The lights turned on. The hole got a little bit smaller. <clears throat> okay. Uh, let's take a break from it and let's do some problems. I'm starting with the, how to do the design.